is about sabr. How many levels are there? Four. Uh, and which one is, you know, a major sin? Which one is a major sin? If a calamity befalls, so what, what does a person do? The wailing one. Okay, the complaining one. Yes, alhamdulillah. And the highest level is? Who remembers the highest level? Yeah, the grateful. Yeah. Okay, alhamdulillah. So gratitude. So you all have learned about gratitude. And then you, are, are you watching yourself now? Alhamdulillah, that we're on just three. Are you watching yourself that you're not going to be complaining? You're always, you're not going to give a negative reaction. And then you're always going to think, am I doing this? You know, this, I, I may not like this situation, but inshallah khair is going to come out. And also one more thing. It was mentioned about marriage and it is, I'm addressing the young people and all these people who have children and the children who are going to listen. You know, it says in the Quran, it is okay. Yes, you're allowed to marry uh, uh, a, a, a woman of the book. Okay. But yesterday's Jews, what did we learn? What was the take home? Who is better? A, a, a mushrika? A one who, because you know, no doubt, even the, the people of the book are mushrik at this moment in time. The Christians, they are doing shirk. Um, so, so what will what advice would you give them? What is what did you learn? That it is better that you marry someone of lower sta status than that uh, who is a Muslim than compare compare it to compared to a non a non believing lady. And another trend I see here in the West. And may Allah protect people in the Muslim lands with this, is that girls are get, getting married to disbelievers. Can a woman get married to a disbeliever? No. Point blank, no. Because, can you give me a reason? Because now here people are going to say women's rights and this and that. Why? Can you tell them why? Why? He's a kafir, okay, but that, yes. The progeny, the children. The children take the religion of the father. Yeah? And remember, Islam is here to protect the lineage. Okay? Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala internalize um, uh, our knowledge and put it in practice. May Allah protect our children from making wrong decisions that is going to have implications in the longer term sisters who are asking me for the quran i will inshallah ask the admin to put the link the thing is i can't share the whole quran it is believe me it took me such a long time uh, to download so they will share it on their they'll share the google drive link and then you can have it um as uh, you like with yourselves okay right let's begin now bismillah we begin i just read أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم تلك الرسل اوكي تلك الرسل فضلنا بعضهم على بعض منهم من كلم الله ورفع بعضهم درجات واتينا عيسى بن مريم البينات وايدناه بروح القدس ولو شاء الله ما اقتتل الذين من بعدهم من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات ولكن اختلفوا فمنهم من امن ومنهم من كفر ولو شاء الله ما اقتتل ولكن Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins um, the Jews, um, begins Jews 3, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those messengers, some of them we cause to exceed others. Um, among them were those to whom Allah spoke, and he raised some of them in degree. And we gave Isa alayhi salam, the, the son of Maryam, clear proofs and we supported him with the pure spirit, with Jibreel. Now what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is saying here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen, has chosen in each category of his creation, some over the rest. And we see this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom and knowledge. We don't question that. It is from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he prefers some creation of the other. If you look around, don't we look some we look at some trees? Don't we look at some flowers? Don't, don't we look at some animals? And they are, you know, um, each of them has their own beauty. Each of them uh, is different in size. And, you know, like some flowers, they are so fragrant. And some flowers, they are so beautiful and yet not fragrant. Similarly, the prophets of Allah, 
also Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pre preferred some prophets over the other Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave similar just like you know the, the month of Ramadan is preferred over other months the, the superiority of the hijjah is, is better than other months so and and we we don't question and as for us we don't we say oh we believe in all the prophets but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself he chose some over the others based on his wisdom and based on his knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, uh, if Allah had willed those generations succeeding them, they would have fought each other after clear proofs had come to them, but they deferred and some of them believed and some of them disbelieved. Meaning that, you know, the, the Christians, they say they prefer Isa alayhi salam. The, the, the Jews, they prefer Musa alayhi salam and they totally not consider Isa alayhi salam and, uh, as a prophet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, had it not been, if Allah wanted, Allah could have forced everyone to believe. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Allah has given all the human beings a free will. And that is why Allah says, if Allah had willed, they would not have fought each other. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had could have prevented all the arguments and all the fighting that had happened, but that is not the way of Allah. Allah does whatever He intends. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnaakum min qabli an yatiya yawmul la bay'un wala la bay'un fihi wala khullah wala shafa'ah wal kafirun humul zalimun. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, I'd like you to highlight this. And one more thing, a point of benefit is that you see, an ayah beginning with ayah, it gives us a, an indication. This is a madini ayah. Okay. When Allah addresses us as, oh, you who believed, who have believed. And makki ayah is that begin with, oh, ya you nas, oh, you mankind. Okay. Oh, mankind. And in Madini ayahs, it begins with, Ya Yuladina Amanu. And we highlight Allah. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? Oh, you who have believed, spend from that which we have provided you. Okay, so the instruction we are being given is spend, spend from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. You see how spending is continuously being re repeated in every juice. Spend from your wealth, spend from your knowledge, spend from your, your skills, from, spend from your time, uh, your talents. All these are the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we've been told that don't withhold, but spend. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, spend out of what Allah has given you before comes a day in which there is no exchange and no friendship and no intercession. And the believer and the disbelievers, they are the wrongdoers. Meaning, in this dunya, what is going to happen is people can, um, you know, people can pay money and, you know, get away with many things. But on the day of judgment, the currency on the day of judgment. Can somebody remind me what is going to be the currency on the day of judgment? Deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an opportunity to, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an opportunity to, to spend now in dunya. Spend now in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever way you can. Don't let the shaitan fool you that you see uh, you don't have money, when you will have money in good times. You know, being kind to someone is also sadaqah. Smiling at, uh, at your, looking at your brother and sister is sadaqah. So spend in whatever way before a day comes where, you know, no friendship is going to come to avail, no intercession, and people are going to be at loss. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with the greatest ayah of the Quran. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la naum. Lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi-idhni. Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. Wa la yuhiituna bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bima sha'a. Wasi'a kursiyuhu al-samawati wa al-ard. Wa la ya'uduhu hifzuhuma wa huwa al-aliyu al-azim. So there are 10 sentences in this. It is the greatest ayah of the Quran. And the 10 sentences, uh, I will read each one of you, uh, each one to you. Allahu la ilaha illahu. 
Um, and Allah, Allah, the name Allah is the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this ayah, there are five names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned here. I'd like you to highlight them, please. Allah, the name of Allah himself. Al-Hay, Al-Qayyum, Al-Ali, Al-Azim. These are five names mentioned in this ayah alone. And there are more than 50, 15, I beg your pardon, 15 attributes mentioned. And the virtue of this um, ayah of the Quran is, and I hope and I pray that everybody has memorized and anyone who is learning to memorize, I make dua that Allah allows you to memorize this um, uh, ayah of the Quran. Um, the virtue of it is, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when a person goes to bed and recites Ayat al-Kursi, then there will be a God from Allah who will protect him all night long and shaitan will not be able to come near him until Fajr. Can, I, can you type one? If you don't know and you are in the process of learning um, uh, Ayat al-Kursi, type one for me, please. If you're in the process of learning. Okay, alhamdulillah, most of the people know. Okay. Everybody knows. Alhamdulillah. And the ones who are learning, I read this with my kids before going to bed. And after, yes, I was going to come to that. So, you know, there are some reword sisters, some people struggling with, you know, learning the Arabic language. So make sure that this is most important. The ones, the sisters who have young children, make sure you make you make it a habit that you teach them Aytul Kursi. Okay. And we know we know the hadith of Abu Huraira, uh, you know Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Um, yeah, who told it? This this uh, protection bit. Who told him? It was Shaitan. Because Abu Huraira was guarding um, Bayt al Mal one one night, and what happened is that this you know he would come in the form of a human being and. Abu Huraira would, would catch him and then every time he would make an excuse and get away and a few days it happened and then Abu Huraira you know was going to catch him uh, and take him to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so you know Shaitan said to Abu Huraira um, you know this that if you if you recite this um, Aytul Kursi then you there will be a guard from uh, Allah who will protect him uh, protect this person all night long and shaitan will not be able to come near him until fajr prophet then abu huraira went to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the next morning and told him about this whole situation and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he is a liar but he has spoken the truth at this occasion okay so we come to um, the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the first description of Allah is in this ayah, the name Allah. And the name of Allah is the most powerful name. It is the most blessed name. And there's another hadith. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, when you hear the barking of dogs and braying of donkeys in the night, then seek refuge with Allah. Why? Because these creatures, they see what you do not see and limit going out when the footsteps have Quite, quietened. Why? Because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spreads in the night whoever he, of his creation that he wills, close the doors and say the name of Allah upon them. So you see when you close the door, the shaitan does not enter a, a door that has been closed with the name of Allah. Okay, so make this a, a, a habit that when you are closing the, the door, um, then make sure you say Bismillah. And then avoid going out at night because there are, yes, of course, windows as well. But the door is the main exit, right? And uh, another hadith, there's, there's a, the screen between the eyes of the jinn and the children of Adam is when, when one of you enters the area of relieving oneself, then you should say Bismillah. Meaning when you, um, when you are entering the toilet, make sure you say Bismillah. When you are changing your clothes, because the, the jinn and the shayateen can see you, right? So then make sure you say Bismillah, not Bismillah rahman rahim Remember I said only for recitation of Quran, we say Bismillah rahman rahim But other than that, we say Bismillah. So then a screen comes in between uh, and us and the, and the jinn. So it makes a barrier between them. Okay. And... Um, 
uh, it was written that Iblis asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Rab, you have given every creation a risk. The animals have their risk. The birds have their risk. They have their food. But what about, you know, what is for me? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that on which my name is not mentioned. So every time we forget to say Bismillah, who eats the food? Every time we forget to say Bismillah over a drink, who eats it? Who drinks it? Shaitan gets his share. So, and and when we forget, what do we say? Bismillah, awwali wa akhiri. If you forget in between, then just say Bismillah, awwali, akhiri. Because we don't want, um, we don't want shaitan to get the share. So what do we do to secure our actions, our deeds? We take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most powerful name, the word Allah. Okay. And then it is la ilaha illa hu. La ilaha illa hu. What does it mean? None has the right to be worshipped in truth but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. None has the right to be worshipped in truth but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that saying la ilaha illallah is the best dhikr. Yeah. La ilaha illallah will, 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 weigh, will fill the scale of good deeds. Um, there was um, a man, he came to the Prophet ﷺ in the battle of uh, Khaybar and he embraced Islam. And he said, La ilaha illallah, with true understanding and true, uh, from the truth and the sincerity of his heart. And immediately after saying the Shahada, he participated in the battle. And, and of course, he passed away. Uh, he was a Shaheed. So he was killed in the battle. The Prophet ﷺ, when he buried him, he وسلم, said, This is a man who has not even made one sajda uh, to Allah, but he will enter Jannah. Why? Because he said, La ilaha illallah. So you see how heavy the statement of La ilaha illallah is. Now I'd like you all to say from the bottom of your heart, from the sincerity of your heart, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Make sure that you're in the goal, that you're reciting La ilaha illallah. And make sure that the meaning is what? You know, what is the correct meaning? None has the right to be worshipped in truth but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then al-hay al-qayyum. So what is al-hay? The ever-living. Allah is the ever-living who never dies. And al-qayyum, the one who sustains everyone and everything. All the creation stand in need in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all the creation, they totally, totally rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he is the most rich who stands in need of nothing created and it is this hadith uh, it is narrated by Abu Umama may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the greatest name of Allah is in three surahs of the Quran Ismul Azam, you know, when people say Ismul Azam, this is Ismul Azam, meaning the greatest name. Which are the, and this is the hadith. And this hadith is in Ibn Majah. Uh, and, Allah, and the Prophet وسلم, said, the greatest name of Allah is in three surahs in, of the Quran Al Baqarah, Al Ali Imran, Ali Imran, and Taha. So, you know, these are the names of Allah, and they are not ordinary names. And when you make dua using this name, your dua is definitely going to be accepted. So please write that down. And we know from the seerah as well that at the time of the Battle of Badr, the Prophet ﷺ was in extreme difficulty. He was uh, very, very anxious. What did he say? Ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith. Ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith. So you're calling on to Allah with his greatest names. Oh Allah, the ever-living, the eternal one. I seek help. I seek your help by your mercy. So you help me, Ya Ya. Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum. On another occasion, we, 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 we read that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting near a man and Anas Radiallahu Anhu was also next to him. And this man was making the dua. Ya Badi'a As-Samawati Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum Inni As-Aluk O oh, originator of the heavens and the earth, O oh, ever living and eternal, I ask you. The Prophet said, Do you know what this man what this man has made dua with? 
he by one in whose hand my soul is, this man has called upon Allah by those names in which when he is called, then Allah accepts the dua. So if you want your dua to be accepted, then make sure you call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the words, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum. I hope you know this dua yourself. Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum bi rahmatika staghith. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la naum. And then here is um, that neither drowsiness nor overtakes him nor sleep. Now here, something very, very important I'd like you to, uh, to know. Now, drowsiness and um, sleep are negative attributes, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is negative in sense of it's his weakness, in, it's weakness in us, in human being, in the creation. But Allah is Allah. So Allah has denied those attributes for himself, which, you know, imply affirming the absolute perfection of opposite. Yeah, the opposite of uh, a drowsiness and the opposite of sleep is, this is in Aqidah, very, very important when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala denies, negates uh, an, um, an attribute, that means it is affirming the perfection of their opposite. Okay, and then Lahuma fis samawati wama fil ard. And to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And who can intercede with him? The next next sentence, who can intercede with him except by his permission? He knows what is present, what is in front of him and what is after him, and they encompass not a thing. Uh, of his knowledge except for whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Now, what is the kursi? The kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the footstool of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before I get, I'll get into the kursi, I want to tell you something. You know where it is, lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it shows how the sovereignty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything in the heavens and the earth belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know the heavens are seven. And so is the number of earths. The number of earth is seven. And so is the number of the heavens. And no one on that day is going to be able to intercede for another person. Um, and intercession is only going to be through the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, and the three conditions are it's going to be with Allah's permission. Number two, Allah should be pleased with the person who is interceding. And number three, that who is being interceded for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be pleased with that person as well. So the, the three things, you know, the day, you know, some people believe that they're saints and can intercede for them. No one can intercede unless these three conditions are fulfilled. So what is telling, uh, what is this telling us? It affirms the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that his knowledge comprehends the past, the present and the future. When, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, aydihim wa ma khalfa. Yeah. And then, وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ and they will never encompass anything of his knowledge. Um, uh, and Allah knows what happens to his uh, creatures. Now coming to the kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the kursi? The kursi is the footstool of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the entire universe, the skies, the earth compared to the kursi of Allah are like a ring in a desert. I'd like you to think about that. I want you to imagine. Okay. I want you to imagine that you have a ring and it's lost somewhere in the room. The ring, your, your room, your living room is huge. Now, the, the ring is somewhere. Now, compare the size of the ring to your room. Okay? It's nothing, right? Now, think about that. Compare in your mind, think of all the massive deserts that we know. And think of all the whole of the planet Earth. Okay? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all, everything that is in the heavens and the earth and com uh, compared to the kursi is like a ring. So it just shows that how trivial, how trivial is um, uh, the, the dunya compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And imagine, this is the footstool of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the magnitude of his arsh, the throne. And then I want you to imagine the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. 
Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to truly appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. And then now, وَلَا يَؤُدُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا He feels no tiredness in guarding and preserving the heavens and the earth. So what is it affirming? The strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It affirms the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ And he is the exalted, the high. Again, another attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being uh, told to us. The attribute of perfection is that the attribute of being above the creation. Allah is not everywhere, my dears. Allah is above his throne, above the seven heavens. So, and Azim, the name of Allah, it means the great. So there is no one higher above Allah. He's al Azim, the greatest one. And no one is greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And, um, you know, and it only befits us that we need to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why we say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Tell me, where do we say Subhana Rabbi al Azim? Jazakallah khair. We, see, we say it in our ruku. When we bow down, we say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Uh, I'll read to you a hadith. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever says, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, yeah, oh, perfect. how perfect are you, O oh Allah, and all praises for you, 100 times a day will have their sins forgiven, all his sins forgiven, even if they are they were as much as the form of the sea. And this hadith is in Bukhari. And another hadith, he who says in the morning, subhanallah, he will be hamdi, the person who says, then they will have, and they say it 100 times in the morning and in the evening, also, then no one in the creation will be will have the same level as them unless someone has said more than them. Okay, so please make it a habit and action point that you are going to recite Subhanallah wa bihamdihi a uh, hundred times in the morning and in the evening. And I make dua that Inshallah you are you are already doing it. Then we go on to La ikraha fi din min al yakfur. There is no compulsion in religion, in the acceptance of religion. Now, may, you know, people take this ayah as Muslims and say, don't, don't force me to do this. No, this is, there's no compulsion in acceptance of the religion. Okay, no one is forced to accept Islam. Okay, but once you've entered Islam, then you have to abide by the rules. Okay, this is only that we don't force people. And it goes on to say, whoever disbelieves in the Ta'awud. Let me read the whole translation. There's no compulsion in religion. Verily, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. Whoever disbelieves in Ta'awud and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold and that will never break. And Allah is all hearer, all knower. Okay. Next, I am... Um, We'll go on to the next page. Alhamdulillah, we've completed one page. Allahu waliyu ladhina amanu. يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاؤُهُمُ الطَّاغُوتُ يُخْرِجُونَهُمْ مِنَ النُّورِ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ أُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is um, telling us that Allah is the wali of and those who believe, Allah is the protector, the guardian of those who believe. He brings to them out from the darkness. He brings them out from darkness into light. But as for those who disbelieve, their awliya are ta'ud, meaning false deities and false leaders. They bring them out from light into darkness. They are the dwellers of the fire and they will abide by thereby in forever. May Allah make us of those who are. Um, the friend, the 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 Allah becomes the wali. I mean, so the thing is, who is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saying that Allah has made the wali of the one? You know, when we start acting on the religion, we start following the rules. 
and then we uh, we follow okay for example you know you do, you are you, you given up music alhamdulillah you have decided that you're not going to attend uh, mixed gatherings then what happens your circle of friends starts to close down people who used to be your friends they are not going to be your friends anymore because they say that you are not fun anymore because their idea of fun is going out and having fun and you know dressing in a certain way behaving in a certain way so this person who is a mu'min starts feeling alone so then what is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that you know when you hold on uh, to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you've held on urwatul wuthqa, you've held on on a strong, uh, firm, strong hold. And, and the, that stronghold is with who? The connection is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, this person, it may be apparent that this person has become alone, but no, you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your side. And Allah is your friend. So if Allah is your friend, then what else do you want? And then Allah says he will take you out from out of darkness into light. Yeah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, and those who disbelieve, who are their allies? Their allies are Baghut. And they take them out of light into darkness. And these people are the, um, the, are the dwellers of the fire. So we are now going to learn uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides his, the next examples in the next few ayahs, that how Allah guides his servants to the nur. How Allah is al-hay, we learn the name al-hay, the ever-living, the giver of life, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps his friends. So now is, we're going to start the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Does anybody remember what was the title given to Ibrahim alayhi salam? I told you about two titles given to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Do you remember? The, 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 the Khalil Allah, yes, he's the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is what of the prophets? He's what of the prophets? Barakallahu feekum. He's the father of all the prophets. Subhanallah. So let's now learn uh, about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. Alam tara ila alladhi hajja Ibrahimu fi rabbihi an atahu Allahu al-mulka id qala Ibrahimu rabbi alladhi yuhyi wa yumid qala ana uhyi wa umid qala Ibrahimu fa inna Allaha ya'ti bil-shamsi min al-mashriqi fa'ti biha min al-maghrib fabuhita alladhi kafar wallahu la yahdi al-qawm al-zalimin have you not considered the the one this is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the king of Iraq his name was Nimrud who argued with Ibrahim about his lord merely because Allah had given him kingship when ibrahim uh, uh, said my lord is the one who gives life and causes death and nimrud said i give life and death because he claimed to be god right so he called he uh, he summoned the his people to get someone from the prison and he he got two prisoners from them he said to one uh, you're free to go and he killed he ordered that the other one be killed so he says look i give life and i also give death so Ibrahim alayhi salam said, indeed Allah brings up the sun from the east, so bring it up from the west. So if you truly, if you truly God, then do that. So the disbeliever was overwhelmed by astonishment and Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. So you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Ibrahim alayhi salam, such a defense, how to speak. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps the believers as well. Okay. And then, um, the next ayah, uh, I beg your pardon. Ibrahim alayhi salam says that or consider an example of the one who passed by a township which had fallen into ruin. He said, how will Allah bring this to life after its death? So Allah caused him to die for a hundred years, then he revived him. And Allah said, how long have you remained? The man said, I have remained a day or a part of day. 
and they say that this is about Uzair alayhi salam. So he was dead for hundred years, and he and he said, I think I remained, uh, uh, you know, I remained in this situation for a day or a part of the day. Allah said, rather you have remained one hundred years. Look at your food and your drink; it has not changed with time. And look at your donkey, and we will make you a sign for the people. Look at the bones of this donkey, and we raise them up and we cover them with flesh and before your very eyes and when it became clear to him he say he said i know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over all things competent so when a person believes and he wants to increase in his faith then this is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him conviction right so this is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives certainty yeah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who dispels doubts and grants us uh, and all the people conviction. Yeah, the, the first step is believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next ayah. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُهِي oh, I beg your pardon, I just, uh, something is hindering my screen. Yeah, it was it's a beautiful, beautiful ayah. And mentioned when Ibrahim السلام, said, My Lord, show me how, how you give life to the dead. Now, understand Islam, you know, allows you to question in some ways. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam was an in intelligent person. So an intelligent person is going to ask questions. So, you know, he he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how will you bring the dead to life? Show it to me, ya Allah. And Allah said to him, have you not believed? Ibrahim alayhi salam said, yes, I, yes, but I ask only that my heart may be satisfied. So Allah said, take four birds and commit them to yourself, meaning tame them. And then after slaughtering them, uh, put each uh, put on each hill a portion of them and call them. They will come flying to you in haste and know that Allah is exalted in might and wise. You see, uh, any one of you who has pets, any one of you who has pets, you know when you love them and you feed them, don't every time you aren't you amazed that this animal he can't uh, talk or she can't talk. And they're totally dependent on you. And then when you call them, how lovingly they respond to you back. You know, every time you need, when you have pets and you do that, make sure you say, you know, subhanallah, how is Allah's creation? And think about yourself as well, that how, when Allah is going to call us, when we are dead in our graves and we're going to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to call us, we are all going to rise and rush to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what we've done in dunya, we've believed in Allah, we've not believed in Allah. Everyone is going to, so this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the example, you know, uh, the example of the birds to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to the Ibrahim alayhi salam. Um, that, um, you know, how these birds responded to him, despite the fact that the, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam had, had been asked to slaughter them and their pieces were placed in different hills but Allah, uh, and he called them and everyone came flying. So, so what does that teach us? Um, what matters to us is Allah is our friend. Yeah. If Allah is our friend, then we are going to be protected. And what is the first condition for Allah to be our friend? That we need to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, we need to reject the taghut. What is taghut? Anything that is, you know, the, the, the thing that leads you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we, re we reject them. We refuse to accept them. And, you know, in, in our real life, would, how, do we, how do, would you apply this ayah in your life? You know, sometimes, I, and I'll tell you what happened to me. A few years ago when I was out shopping, I went to a shop and I was in my, in, in my Islamic attire. And there was an, a, a lady of age. And she comes to me and she says, what is this? Why, why, why are you making the religion difficult? The Islam is in the heart. You don't have to show that you're wearing this. And, you know, she was trying to convince herself, I think, um, that, you know, you don't have to cover yourself. The, the deen of Allah is, you know, the fear of Allah is in the heart. This is an excuse, isn't it? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a lady has reached the age of puberty, then you have to cover. Then what do we do? We say we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As much as I like to dress up, I'm not going to do that because it is not something that 
uh, is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not going, I'm going to follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as much as the shaitan whispers, as much as, uh, you know, um, your nafs tells you, as much as people around you tell you, you know, we should we should follow what is in the Quran and the Sunnah. And, I, and you know, with the topic of hijab as well, you know, the, on the social media, there's a trend where people, you know, the ladies who are wearing a scarf and they took off their scarf because they say, this is a matter between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, it is not. It is not. Yeah. And what do we say? That our Lord, Allah has the the has said that this is right. I have to do it. And now because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me what is right and what is wrong, I am going to avoid it in all cases. And when I when I overcome that hurdle and I'm going to overcome that obstacle, what I'm going to do, what's going to happen? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to become my protector, going to become my helper. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save us then. Allah will protect our faith. Allah will guide us uh, in the best way. And finally, will lead, uh, will take us to Jannah, inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to explain to us from ayah number 261 is with the Islamic finance basically is going to be discussed. Um, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ مَثَلُ ما, uh, كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلًا فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِئَةَ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ, يضاعف لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله ثم لا لا يتبعون ما أنفقوا من ولا أذل لهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون so what I what I've been saying, the, the example of those who spend in their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of a grain which grows seven spikes. So what happens? For example, all those of you who are keen gardeners. So when you when you sow a seed, it grows, right? It grows into a beautiful tree, and sometimes it produces fruit. So likewise, when a person spends in the way of Allah, as it, it is as though that person has buried a seed. Yeah, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives you the wealth. Yeah, and, and when you bury the seed, what and is like, you know, you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the apparent, you've lost it, right? On the apparent, you've lost it. It's like burying a seed. It, it But what is Allah telling you? No, don't worry. It's not destroyed. You know, you've not, your money is not gone waste. What is going to happen? It will grow into seven spikes and each spike will have a hundred grains, meaning the reward is going to be multiplied 700 times and, and Allah multiplies his reward for whom he wills and Allah is all encompassing and all knowing. Okay. So where should we spend? The question is, where should we spend? We need to spend to strengthen the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to promote the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How are you going to reach to, uh, to, to, to places where the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be spread? Because when you spend in whatever currency you're coming from, then and what happens is that, that it is multiplied to 700 times. So we are going to, you know, it is fi sabilillah in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can be also that you see a masjid around you, uh, uh, an education center where they're teaching Islam, uh, Islam. Then see if you can help in providing whatever they need. You don't have to wait for them to say we are in need of the sofa, we need a, a, of chairs. We in need of carpets, but you go and you find out what are their needs, and then you spend in, in their way. So you see, the you know people to earn dunya, people do so much effort, but is the dunya going to stay with them? Yeah. Uh, we also need to think about you know giving to the people who are serving the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah. Uh, and Allah honors that service as well. So make sure that whatever you're doing, your intention uh, is that you are uh, you're doing it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the efforts that you do, uh, which are made in the in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are appreciated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next ayah. قول معروف ومغفرة خير خير من صدقة يتبعها أذى والله غني 
الحليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى كالذي ينفق ماله رئاء الناس ولا يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فمثله كمثل صفوان عليه تراب فأصابه وابل فتركه صلدا لا يقدرون على شيء مما كسبوا والله لا يهدي القوم الكافرين Those people who spend their wealth in the way of Allah and then do not follow up with what they have spent with reminders of injury. Okay, so such people for what they have spent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do that, if you do then uh, then Lahum Ajruhum and Rabbihim, their reward is with Allah, with, with their Lord, and they will have no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. So what is it when we have made an investment with the one who is all powerful? then we know that we can be free of fear, free of worry. Why? Because we know that this investment is going to grow. Because other investments in dunya, they can go haywire, right? You can get and you, there's always a probability. But this investment is safe. It will always grow. Yeah. And, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kind speech is better kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by an injury meaning when you have done good to someone don't expect back don't try and remind them that you know look i've done this so please can i have that you know they or you're not saying it's you you're saying it in such a subtle manner that they you know they feel indebted towards you that they are they should be doing good to you um and hence you know because you have helped them So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by an injury. Okay, sometimes you say, look, I brought, you know, so many things for you. You don't do this for me. All that, don't say. Because if you want to give, give it properly. Yeah, because if you are going to hurt someone's feeling, it is better that you don't give. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of need and forbearing. Meaning Allah does not need you to give his servants and cause them hurt. It will, it would be better that you don't give, but you treat people well. Because you see when a person who gives his wealth and then he causes hurt by constantly reminding of, of the favor, then the, of the, then he, what has he done? He's only caused them hurt. The, the better is ma'ruf. just say good words. So underline this, please. Kaulum ma'roof. Just say good words. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O people who have believed. Now again, we have to pay attention. La tutilu sadaqatukum. Do not invalidate. Do not destroy. Do not cancel out your charity with reminders or injury as does one who spends his wealth only to be seen by people and does not believe in Allah in the last day. His example is like that of a large smooth stone upon which is dust and it is hit by a downpour. So what does it do? That stone, that downpour, it leaves the stone bare. So what happens? Those who spend their wealth for show temporarily, yes, they may, you know, people are going to say, yes, you've done good work. And, and you know, people are going to appreciate. It's going to be acknowledged. But then what happens after that? The charity is not accepted by Allah. No traces of the charity remains. It's like the dust that has settled. Then it and then it got washed off. Okay, ria ria means showing off. Yeah, the work to show off. Then the effort. This effort, when you're doing it to show off, there will be no blessing in it. And they are unable to keep anything of what they have earned. And Allah does not guide the disbelieving people. So you see three things we must avoid when we spend for the sake of Allah. Write them down. Three things you're going to avoid when you're going to spend in the way of Allah. You're, you're going to avoid ri'a, meaning showing off. You're going to avoid adha, meaning causing hurt to someone's feeling. And man is you are constantly reminding them of the favor you're not going to do because what's going to happen, it's going to happen like that on the stone, if the dust is settled, it may appear that you've done something, but a heavy downpour is going to wash it off. So it will become like dust that is washed off. May Allah protect us from that. مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم ابتغاء مرضات الله وتثبيتا من أنفسهم كمثل جنة 
بربوة أصابها وابل فآتت فآتت أكلها ضعفين فإن لم يصبها وابل فطل والله بما تعملون بصير أي ود أحد أحدكم أن تكون له جنة من نخيل وعناب تجري من تحتها الأنها له فيها من كل الثمرات وأصابه الكبر وله ذرية ضعفاء فأصابها إعصار فيه نار فاحترقت كذلك يبين الله لكم الآيات لعلكم تتفكرون and the, and the example of those who spend their wealth doing what ابتغاء مرضات الله seeking the means of approval of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and assuring reward for themselves people who spend this way their example is like that of a garden on a high ground which is hit by a downpour what happens it's, it yields its fruit in double the ground is fertile and the rain is good so what's going to happen the produce is going to double and even if it is not hit by a downpour then a drizzle is sufficient and Allah uh, of what you are do, what you do is seeing so what is what are we going to do we are going to have that conviction that we are doing the, that we are doing whatever we are doing is to seek reward only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever small deed you do you know even picking up rubbish if you you are walking on a street and you see something on on the pavement you just move it away for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you say ya Allah I seek your pleasure if someone else was to come a little child was coming an elderly person was walking on the pavement they might trip over so that tiny deed of yours which did not take a huge effort from yourself then when you do that it will grow immensely and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply that Allah will place barakah in that uh, Ibn Mas'ud said, uh, he said, once a, a man came to a prophet with a camel, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he brought the camel and that camel had a ring in his nose, meaning this, uh, this camel is ready and prepared. So the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and, and the man said, I'm giving this to you for peace of I'm giving this you to, uh, to, for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said, this camel will bring him 700 ringed camels on the day of judgment. So you see, my dears, never consider that what you are, what you do, trivial. Seven hundred camels are going to come for him on the day of judgment, and he only brought one. So a char, so you see what we learn: a charity which is small but done with conviction, done with sincerity, done with certainty, then it becomes huge, and this this vastness in it is barakah. Yeah, and why did we do it? Because of the, uh, because we wanted to seek the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and then uh, Ayah number two hundred and sixty-six. Would one of you like to have a garden of palm trees and grapevines underneath which rivers flow, with in which he has every fruit, um, uh, from it every fruit, meaning a garden in which he has fruit of every kind of produce, but now what happens? He's afflicted with old age. Meaning when the garden is ready, this person is becoming old and he has young children who are dependent on him. And it is hit by a whirlwind containing fire and the entire garden is burnt up. Would any one of us like that? Then Allah, does, does, does Allah make clear to you his verses that you might give a thought? Meaning, if you do not want your entire life's work wasted in an instant, then you should not waste your deeds. How? You should not do showing off. You know, you should not do hurt. You, you should not cause hurt to the people you've given. And you should not, you know, uh, count your favors on them. Otherwise, your deeds are going to go waste. Okay, this is a big lesson for us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to preserve our deeds because our deeds are precious, precious than the riches of these, these worlds. And if they get, you know, they get damaged because we were showing off, we were only doing it to get praise in this dunya, then we are going to be the, like that old man who had a beautiful garden, but the, the thing is, it got all burnt up. يا أيها الذين آمنوا أنفقوا من طيبات ما كسبتم ومما أخرجنا لكم من من الأرض ولا تيمموا الخبيث منه تنفقون ولستم بآخذيه إلا أن تغمضوا فيه وعلموا أن الله غني حميد الشيطان يعيدكم الفقر ويأمركم بالفحشاء والله يعيدكم مغفرة منه وفضلا والله واسع عليم يؤتي الحكمة من يشاء ويؤتي الحكمة فقد 
أوتي خيرا كثيرا ومن يؤتى الحكمة فقد أوتي خيرا كثيرا وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب Yeah, you Ladina Amanu, Allah, again, we are being addressed. Or you who have believed, spend in, uh, from the good things which you have earned from that, which we have produced for, for you from earth, and do not aim towards defective uh, defective thereof. Meaning, do not aim at towards the defective thereof, spending from that while you would not take it yourself except with closed eyes. And know that Allah is free of need and uh, is praiseworthy, meaning do not intend to give defective defective things in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do, don't choose bad things that you have for charity. Rather, what should you give in charity? That which is the best. Okay, so another rule is being taught here that, you know, when you give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of your things. You know, one thing, I don't know in other countries if that is the case, but in the UK, what I hear people is, you know, when they are clearing their house and giving away all their old clothes, they say, we'll give it in charity, right? Change that word. Don't say, I'm going to give it in charity, because now you heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, don't give for me uh, something that is uh, uh, not good. You know, we should not, we should give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best thing. Don't you, don't we, when we buy gifts for our friends, we think about, you know, I, would you give, would you just buy a pound gift to someone? Um, a, you know, you love someone so much. Would you give that or would you pay thought to it? Or would you give some a secondhand stuff to someone? Or would you give your used clothes to someone as a gift? No. Okay. And there's a hadith with that a prophet, the prophet وسلم, you know, came to the masjid and he had a stick in his hand at, the, at that time. And he saw a man hang up a bunch of dates. And he, um, he's, he had the intention that if anybody is hungry, he would come and the person can come and eat. Anyone can come and eat. So it was charity. And it was food for the public. So people who come to the masjid, you know, and this is for us as well, that we need to try and bring in some food. So, but... You know, the man he had given the dates, they were dry and they were bad. So the Prophet ﷺ began striking that branch with his stick and he said, I wish that one who gave this sadaqah had given something better than this. For the one who gave these dry, bad dates will eat will eat bad, dried, these bad, dried, bad dates on the day of resurrection. So remember, what do we remember? That whatever we give, we will get back. So please use proper words. Always give the best things in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just say, I'm going to recycle my, my clothes. I'm giving it to the recycling. Okay? Don't say I'm giving it for charity. And then uh, I am the 268. Uh, shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Shaitan threatens you with poverty. He tells you that if you, you know... Uh, if you give the best, then you will have nothing left, isn't it? That's what we always think. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he or shaitan orders you to uh, for Im um, immorality, while Allah promises you forgiveness from him and bounty. And Allah is all-encompassing and all-knowing. Okay? So, you till hikmata man yasha, Allah gives wisdom to whom he wills. And whoever he has given wisdom has certainly been given some much good and none will remember except those of understanding. Here, ask yourself, um, um, you know, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for yourself. Allahumma inni as'alukal hikmah. Ya Allah, grant me wisdom. Allahumma inni as'alukal hikmah. Allahumma inni as'alukal hikmah. Okay. Let's go on next ayah. So you see the people of the world, they say that if you have the world, if you have wealth, you are good. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that if you have hikmah, you have got, you've been indeed given something good. Uh,
للفقراء الذين أحصروا في سبيل الله لا يستطيعون ضربا في الأرض يحسبهم الجاهل أغنياء من, من التعفف تعرفهم بسيماهم لا يسألون, لا يسألون الناس إلحافة وما تنفقوا من خير فإن الله به عليم الذين ينفقون أموالهم بالليل والنهار سرا وعلانية فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون so whatever you spend in expenditure or make vows, indeed Allah knows of it. And, and for the wrongdoers, there are no helpers. If you disclose your charitable expenditures, that is good. But if you conceal them and give them to the poor, that is better for you. And he will remove from you some of your misdeeds thereby. Uh, uh, and Allah, with what you do, is fully acquainted. So, you know, is it be being told that we can give charity publicly, but then the important thing is what is your intention? Your intention should not be to show off. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, there are deeds that you can hide and do. You can do charity quietly, but there are sometimes, you know, for example, if you're teaching someone, yeah, you can't do that privately. People will know. So some deeds are acceptable, but the important thing is check your heart. Check your heart. Is it connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are your intentions sincere? If your intention is sincere, then your deed is beautiful. Yeah. But uh, remember that the uh, sadqa that is done in secret has its benefit. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this, that the sadqa that is given secretly, privately, extinguishes the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that not upon you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the responsibility for their guidance, but Allah guides whom he wills, and whatever good you believers spend is for yourselves, and you do not spend except seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every time you're giving sadaqah, just say that, Ya Allah, I'm doing it so that I want to see your noble face on the day of judgment. Okay. And whatever you spend of good, it will be fully repaid to you and you will not be wronged. The charity is for the poor who have been restricted for the cause of Allah, unable to move about in the land. Okay, sometimes people, because of their work, you know, um, you know, who take the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, they are teaching, they are serving the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala full time and they don't have money. So, but the person has needs, right? We know from the, the seerah uh, Abu Huraira and many companions, Ashab Sufa, they call Ashab Sufa, they would just remain in the masjid all the time. And what were they doing? They were seeking, they were learning the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the months would pass by and they would not be able to, you know, earn any money. Um, you see, when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went for the battle of Tabuk. And it took almost two months, two months, and it was the time of harvest. So imagine if a person was going out in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would he have time? Yeah. Would he be, would he be going uh, uh, to, to go and harvest? So what are we being told? That when you give if when you give it to the people who are serving the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the best form of charity. Yeah, there are two things. There are two kinds of things we can do. Either we be, we should become of those who are working fi sabilillah, who are working for the deen of Allah, or we should be those who are helping that cause. Okay, so now how how can we be helping the cause financially? Because you know, when the efforts of these people, if the people who are working for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and the ones who are helping, um. Uh, for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to advance, then, you know, we will see that um, our deen is going to grow. So here it's being told that there are people who, you know, uh, who you, you need to give to these people who are being restricted. They're, they are poor because they are, they are restricted. Yeah. Charity for the poor who have been restricted. Why? For the cause of Allah. Unable to move about in the land. So an ignorant person will think that they are self-sufficient because, you know, they don't ask you. They will not beg. So then you will think they're sufficient because of, and, and, and because of their restraints. But you will know them by their sign. They do not ask people persistently. And whatever you spend of good, indeed, Allah is knowing of it. So take home for this is that we need to be either one of the two. Either one 
who are working for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you are the one who is working, who is working in dunya and helping the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, helping the cause. And then those people who spend their wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way by night and by day, secretly and publicly, um, then what is going to happen then for them is their reward with their Lord and there shall be no fear and nor will they grieve. Meaning that when it comes to charity, there's no restriction. Any time of the day, any place, any mode, whenever an opportunity comes, please give charity. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to give a, a, so much, um, whatever you can. And in any time of the day, in Ramadan coming, inshallah, make sure you give charity in the day and you give charity in the night as well. The Prophet ﷺ said, the shade of the believer on the day of judgment is going to be his charity. Now, very profound ayahs are going to start. those who eat riba, meaning who deal in interest, will not stand on the day of resurrection except like the standing of a person beaten by the shaitan leading him to insanity. That is because they say trading is only, so doing business is like, interest whereas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted trading and forbidden interest riba is interest okay so whoever receives an ad admonition from his lord and stops eating riba shall not be punished for the past his case is for allah to judge and but whoever returns to, to riba such are the dwellers of the fire they will thereby abide therein Okay, so what is going to happen? So a person on the day of judgment is going to be uh, behaving like as if a mad person. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the thing is people start making excuses that this is only business. No, certainly not. It is not because Allah has allowed business. Business is halal. But, you know, when you're taking money on interest, when you're taking loan, when you're taking all these mortgages, be careful, my dears. You need to just give up. You need to make the intention that it is not allowed. I wish I could go in more depth to give you so many ahadith, but for you to take home messages, haram, interest is haram. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah will destroy uh, anyone to, uh, the, with riba. Riba means um, interest and will give increase for sadaqat the deeds of charity and Allah likes not the disbelievers, the sinners. Truly those who believe and do good deeds, righteousness and perform a salah and give zakah, they will have their reward with their Lord. And no, and they and on them shall be no fear, nor shall they be grieve. They grieve. O you who believe, be afraid of Allah and give what remains due from the riba. And if you are if you are believers, and if you do not, then take notice of a war from Allah and His Messenger. And but if you repent, you shall have your capital sums um, and deals not uh, capital sums deals not unjustly by asking more, and you shall not be dealt with unjustly by receiving less than your capital sum. So, what is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala trying to tell us? That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala destroys any anything based on interest. Right, the Prophet ﷺ said, "There is no person who deals in interest, interest a great deal, but he will end up with little." Mark these words that this person will think that I'm going to get benefit, but he will. Um, it, there will be initial growth, but eventually, over time, all of a sudden, unexpectedly, there's a huge financial loss. Right, this is the impurity of riba. Yeah. So what do we do? Ayah number 278, we have been told, oh, you who believe, leave 
whatever remains of the interest. So whatever remains that you have, leave it. The money that has interest in it, just leave it. If you are believers. So if you're going to be a believer, then you are not going to take any part, take in any transaction that is based on interest. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cursed the acceptor of interest and its pair, the one who eats it and the one who feeds it. Okay, so even if you are working in a bank and you are signing the mortgage papers, so you are participating in interest. You need to you need to really speak to the scholars and talk about it and and see what you're doing. Because what is being said, if you don't, if you do not seize, yeah, if you do not, what then be informed. So if you don't stop taking interest and be informed that there's going to be a war between you and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the angels will give you the sword that you have to go and fight on the day of judgment with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His Messenger. But if you repent then you may have your principal amount and you do not wrong, nor are you wronged, okay? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And if someone who has taken a loan from you is in hardship, then what should you do? Should you charge interest? No, Allah says, let there be postponement until time of ease. So underline this ayah. So when you are giving debt out to people, Allah is saying, give them time. Because they are going through a difficult time. They are not going to be able to return to you. Okay, so give them time. But if you give, but if you give from, uh, from your right as charity, meaning you forgive the loan completely, then that is better for you. Only if you knew. And then, وَتَقُومَ يَوْمًا and, and fear a day when you will be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then every, show, every soul will be compensated for what it earned and they will not be treated unjustly. So what is the intelligent thing to do? The intelligent thing to do is that whoever puts himself before the, you know, the benefits of dunya, yeah, who you know they they weigh what are, am I going to get the benefit of dunya or the benefit of akhirah? The benefit of dunya is going to be temporary. The benefit of the akhirah is going to be eternal, everlasting. Okay, so what do we do? We we take heed that if you are intelligent, you're not going to be basing on interest because interest it does not last. We have seen empires. We have seen all of you know of some organization, some shop, some business, and they were a big thing. Today they are in loss. They've gone in, you know, a, a, in in you know what is that word? I can't. I can't. They they filed bankruptcy basically. Administration. They've gone in administration. They filed bankruptcy, and it all started with the, uh, with the with the. Uh, interest okay yeah you now this is this ayah is called ayat adayn um ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha tadayantum bi daynin ila ajal musamma faktubu wal yaktub baynakum katibun bil adl wa la ya'ba katibun an yaktuba kama 'allamahu Allah fal yaktub wal yumli lil ladhi 'alayhi al haqq wal yattaqillaha rabbah wa la yabkhas an nas wa la yabkhas minhu shay'a فَإِنْ كَانَ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِ الْحَقُّ سَفِيهًا أَوْ ضَعِيفًا أَوْ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُ أَنْ يُمِلَّ فَهُ يُمِلَّ هُوَ فَلْيُمْلِ الْوَلِيُّهُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَاسْتَشْهِدُوا شَهِيدَيْنِ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُونَ رَجُلَيْنِ فَرَجُلٌ وَامْرَأَتَانِ مِمَّنْ تَرْضَوْنَ مِنَ الشُّهَدَاءِ من الشهداء أن تضل إهداهما فتذكر إهداهم إهداهم الأخرى ولا يأبى شهداء إذا ما دعوا ولا تسأموا أن تكتبوه صغيرا أو كبيرا إلى أجله ذلكم أقصد عند الله وأقوم للشهادة وأدنى ألا ترتابوا إلا أن تكون تجارة هادرة تديرونها بينكم فليس عليكم جناه ألا تكتبوها وأشهدوا إذا تبايعتم ولا يضاء وكاتب ولا شهيد وإن تفعلوا فإنه فسوق بكم واتقوا الله ويعلمكم الله والله بكل شيء عليم This ayah today this is about the loan the one who takes the loan and this ayah is the whole ayah is a page long um, the longest ayah in the Quran the one who is, and it says one who you have or you who have believed when you contract a debt for a specified term then write it down look at Islam you know, people say Islam is an old religion. Look, it's telling you, write it down, make a contract. And let a scribe write it down between you in fairness. Let no scribes refuse to write it. As Allah has taught him, 
So let him write and let the one who has an obligation dictate and let him fear Allah. Let him fear uh, of his Lord and not leave anything out. But if the one has one who has an obligation, meaning the one who's taking the loan, the, the one who has to dictate, if he is of limited understanding or weak or unable to dictate himself, then let the guardian dictate injustice. And bring to witness two witnesses from among your men. And if there if there were not two men available, then a, and a man and two women for those for those whom you accept as witness. So that if one of the women errs, then the other can remind her. And let not the witnesses refuse when when they are called upon. And do not it, be too wary to write it, whether it is large or some or, or small. Uh, whether it is small or large, or for its specified term. You see, even if you're taking hundred pounds from someone write it down it's being to told to us write it down and write down the terms when, until when that is more just in the sight of Allah and is stronger as evidence and more likely to prevent doubt between you except when it is an immediate transaction so if it is immediate transaction you're giving it with one hand and you're taking it with another you don't need to write it down which you conduct among yourself for then there is no blame upon you if you do not write it and take witnesses when you conclude a contract and let no scribe be harmed or any witness. Uh, for if you do so, indeed, it is a grave disobedience and fear Allah and Allah will teach you. Meaning a person learns when they fear Allah and Allah is all knowing of all the things. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ وَلَمْ تَجِدُوا كَاتِبًا كَاتِبًا فَرِيهَانٌ مَقْبُوضًا فَإِنْ أَمِنَ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا فَلْيُؤَدِّ الَّذِي اُتِمِنَا أَمَانَتَهُ وَلْيَتَّقِ اللَّهَ رَبَّهُ وَلَا تَكْتُمُ الشَّهَادَةُ وَمَنْ يَتْتُمْهَا فَإِنَّهُ آتِمٌ قَلْبُ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ عَلِيمٌ and if you are on a journey and cannot take a scribe, then a security deposit should be taken. And if one of you can, in, if one of you entrust another, then let him who is entrusted discharge his trust faithfully and let him fear Allah, his Lord. And do not conceal a testimony for whoever conceals it. His heart is, is indeed sinful and Allah is knowing of whatever you do. And then starts the beautiful Ayat Lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa in tubdu ma fi anfusikum o tukfuhu yuhasibukum bihillah fa yaghfiru liman yasha wa yu'adhibu man yasha wallahu ghafu wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth whether you show or what is within yourselves or conceal it, Allah will bring you to account for it. And then he will forgive you whom he, whomsoever he wills and he will punish whomsoever he wills. And Allah is all over, is ev over everything com competent. And then, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ رُسُلِهِ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَطَعْنَا وَفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا اكْتَسَبَتْ رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِن نَّسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا أَخْطَأْنَا رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِصْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِنَا رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا what are we being told? These, these two ayahs, these two ayahs, um, can I just ask how many of you know them, know them by heart? MashaAllah, barakallah feekum, barakallah feekum. Well done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase your beneficial knowledge. This is a thing for you to do, please, my dears. These two verses are meant to be learned by everyone. These two verses of Surah Baqarah was a gift given to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on Mi'raj. And they are from a treasure beneath Allah's throne. And these are the verses uh, not given to any other prophet before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if anyone recited these two verses from the last of Surah Al-Baqarah at night, then they will be sufficient for him. Sufficient for, for what? For his protection, for his forgiveness, to dispel his fears, to dispel his worries, to calm him down. This, these two verses are sufficient for a believer when he reads them. 
what is what do they mean the uh, ayah 285 the messenger has believed in what was revealed to him from his lord so have the believers all of them have believed in allah and his angels and his books and his messengers saying we make no distinction between any messengers and and they say Samia we hear and we obey we seek forgiveness of our lord and to you is the final destination allah does not charge a soul except with that within his capacity it will have the consequences of what it has gained and it will bear the consequences of what evil it has earned oh allah do not impose blame upon us if we have forgotten or if we have erred oh allah lay not upon us a burden like that which you have laid upon before us our lord and burden us um, uh, with what uh, not not with that which we have no ability to bear and pardon us and forgive us and have mercy on us you are a protector and give us victory over the disbelieving people it is a sunnah to say amin amin after this so what do we learn from this the main take home is underline la yukallifullahu nafsan illa husaha meaning whatever you are going through what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that no soul is going to be burdened more than what it can bear. Okay? No soul does not bear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul more than it can bear. So whatever you are going through, you know, Allah knows that you have the ability to go through. Yeah? So we, you know, we say, Ya Rabb, don't test us. Don't hold us to account on things that we have unknowingly done. And don't put on us a burden that we can't bear now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked to ask us to pray five times to fast a month of ramadan now is that difficult no it is not it is not difficult so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us uh, if we forget yeah and we say ya allah don't impose on us what we cannot bear and ya allah help us against the people who are uh, against the, the, the disbelieving people and may Allah make it easy for the people, for the Muslims who are going through a difficult time in Palestine. May Allah make it easy for them. May Allah uh, allow us to be of benefit to the people. And may Allah help the Muslims around the world. Alhamdulillah, we conclude Surah Al-Baqarah here and we start Surah, Al Surah Al Imran. And the Sunnah is to say Ameen after this. So make sure you uh, underline um Let's begin. Surah Ali Imran. And um, about Surah Ali Imran, Prophet said, Recite the true, the two bright ones as Zahrawain. The, the two bright ones are the two bright surahs are Surah Al Baqarah and Surah Ali Imran. Why? Because in the day of the resurrection, they will come as two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds in ranks, pleading for those who used to recite them. Yeah, so Alhamdulillah, we read Surah Al-Baqarah. Now we're going to begin Surah Al-Imran. So we can be among those people who are coming into this category that uh, the two birds are going to come and they are going to, um, you know, plead for us um, uh, on the day of judgment. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif lam mim. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. Nazzala alaykum al-kitaba bil-haqqi musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi wa anzala al-tawrat wa al-injil. Min qabilu hudan lil-nasi wa anzala al-furqan. Inna al-lazina kafaru bi ayati Allahi lahum azabun shadidun wa Allahu azizun azizun dhun tiqam. Inna Allaha la yakfa alayhi shay'un fi al-ardi wa la fi al-sama. Huwa al-ladhi yusawwirukum fi al-arhami kayfa yasha. لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخرى متشابهات فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه منه بتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد Now, who is going to tell me what are huruf مقطع <laughs> What are huruf muqatta'at? Who remembers what is the meaning of huruf muqatta'at? It begins with alif lam mim, right? What is huruf muqatta'at?
Barakallahu feekum. They are separated letters and no one knows the meaning except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we begin the translation, ayah 2. Allah, there's no de deity except him, the ever-living, the sustainer of uh, existence. See, you see, al-hayyul qayyum. We know now, and inshallah, in Surah Taha, so we come across that. He has sent down upon the, uh, you the book in truth, confirming what was before it, and he revealed the Torah and the gospel before as a guidance for people and he revealed the quran indeed those who disbelieve in the verses of allah will have severe punishment and allah is exalted in might the owner of retribution indeed from allah nothing is hidden in the earth nor in the heaven it is he who reforms it is he who forms you in the wombs however he wills and there is no deity except him the exalted in might and wise it is he who has sent down to you the o prophet وسلم, the book in it are verses that are precise they are the foundation of the book and and other verses that are unspecific meaning that there are verses in the quran whose meaning we cannot specify why because allah and his messenger did not specify the meaning of those verses yeah for example we know huruf muqattaad what does it mean we don't know we cannot specify so those people in whose hearts is deviation they will follow that of it which is unspecific those people so we are, you know, they, these people who are looking for some faults, they're seeking discord and seeking an interpretation that is suitable to them. And no one knows its true interpretation except Allah. But those firm in knowledge, they say, Amen, we believe in it. So Alhamdulillah, we say we believe, we don't know the meaning. So whenever you, you, you come across something in the Quran that you don't understand the meaning of, you don't fully understand, you say, Ya Rabbi. Amen. I believe in it and everything and then all is from our Lord and no one will be reminded except those of understanding. Now the next dua that I want you to underline is ayah number 8. Please underline because the people they say oh our Lord let our let not our hearts deviate from what you have guided us. So let not, let not the shaitan Take the better of us. Oh Allah let not our hearts deviate after what you've guided us and grant us victory from your self from your mercy. Indeed, you are the bestower. O oh, our Lord, surely you will gather people of, uh, on the day in which there is no doubt. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not fail in his promise. يؤيد بنصره من يشاء إن في ذلك لعبرة لأول الأبصار زين للناس هب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير القناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرث ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب قل أنبئكم بخير من ذلك للذين اتقوا عند ربهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار قالدين فيها وأزواج مطهرة ورضوان من Indeed, those who disbelieve never will their wealth or their children avail them except uh, I beg your pardon, avail them against Allah, and it is they who are the fuel of fire. Right? Today, what are we doing? Aren't we pursuing dunya? Aren't we doing everything just for the children and 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 to increase in our wealth and what is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that if you don't do it with the intention for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then these very people are going to become the fuel of fire theirs is like the custom of the fir'aun and those before them so you know we need to look back in history what happened some he was a man of wealth and status what happened they denied allah says they denied our signs so allah sees them for their sins and allah is severe in penalty so say to those who disbelieve you will be overcome you will you will be overcome and gathered to hell and wretched is this resting place already there has been uh, for you a sign in two armies which met when 
this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the battle of Badr, the first battle. One uh, fighting in the cause of Allah and another of disbelievers. They saw them to be twice their own number by their eyesight. The dis you know, so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that the disbelievers, they saw the Muslims were only 313 in number, but Allah made them see the Muslims as twice in number. So Allah will su Allah support, but Allah supports with his victory whom he wills. Indeed, in that is a lesson for those who have a vision. So what is Ibra? Meaning uh, Ibra is a lesson that how Allah gradually seizes those who are doing wrong and he makes them a lesson for others. So may Allah protect us from that. Um, beautified for people is the love of that which they desire. What do people desire? They desire women and their children and gold and silver. So Allah is saying beautified for the people is the love of that which they desire of women and children and heaps of some heap sums of gold and silver uh, and, and fine branded horses and cattle and, and tilled land. And that is the enjoyment of the worldly life. And But Allah has with him the best return. So you see that although these these things, Allah is kind of saying Allah has beautified, but we don't keep it to our heart. There's no harm being wealthy. But the thing is that your wealth, your heart should not be attached to your wealth. Okay. And our goal should be akhirah oriented. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, be moderate in seeking worldly things. Why? Because Allah is, with Allah is a better reward. Yeah. So the one, who, you know, we need to remember that if our goal is dunya, then this person is only going to suffer in the akhirah. But the one who makes akhirah his goal, then, you know, and, and he compromises in dunya, he lets go. So, and he, Allah will give him dunya as well, but his akhirah is secure. Okay, ayah 15, shall Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, shall I inform you of something better than that? For those who fear Allah will be gardens in the presence of their Lord beneath which rivers flow and wherein they abide eternally and purified spouses with them and approval from Allah and Allah is seeing of his servants. Ya Allah, make us of those people. Make us of those people. Ameen, Ya Rabb. Alladheena, now, so who are these people? Alladheena yaquluna rabbana innana amanna faqfil lana dhunubana wa qina adab al-nar as-sabirina wa as-sadiqina wa al-qanitina wa al-munfiqina wa al-mustagfirina bil-ashaar shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa hu wa al-malaikatu wa ulul ilmi qa'iman bil-qist la ilaha illa hu al-aziz al-hakim inna al-deen inda Allah al-islam wa makhtalaf alladheena utu al-kitab illa min ba'd بعد ما جاءهم العلم بغيا بينهم ومن يكفر بآيات الله فإن الله سريع الحساب فإن حاجوك فقل أسلمت وجهي لله ومن اتبع وقل للذين أوتوا الكتاب والأميين أسلمتم فإن أسلموا فقد اهتدوا وإن تولوا فإنما عليكم عليك البلاغ والله بصير بالعباد إن الذين يكفرون بآيات الله ويقتلون النبيين بغير, بغير حق ويقتلون الذين يأمرون بالقسط من الناس فبشرهم بعذاب أليم أولئك الذين حبطت أعمالهم في الدنيا والآخرة وما لهم من ناصرين so who are going to have the rivers flowing? May Allah make us of those, those who say, Rabbana inna amanna. They say, oh Lord, indeed we have believed. Ya Allah, so forgive us. Ya Allah, forgive us our sins and protect us from the punishment of fire. Say, Ameen, Ameen, Ya Rabb. Um, as Allah goes on, SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to specify who are these people. as those who are patient, those who are true, those who are obedient, those who spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who, who seek forgiveness before the dawn, last part of the night, inshallah, make it a, underline this and make it a point that in uh, when you wake up for suhoor, inshallah, all of us are going to wake for suhoor, may Allah give us life and may Allah give us health that we're able to fast, then we are going to do istighfar, then we are going to be entitled for Jannah, inshallah. Allah witnesses that there is no deity except him and, and so do the angels and those uh, of knowledge and, and that he's maintaining crea creation in fairness and there's no deity except him the exalted in might and wise indeed the religion the only religion in the sight of Allah is Islam and those who were given the scriptures did not differ except after knowledge had come to them and why did they differ? Because out of jealousy, out uh, out of jealous animo animosity between themselves, whoever disbelieves in the verses of Allah, then indeed Allah is swift in taking account. So if they argue with you, you say, I have submitted myself to Allah in Islam. 
and so have those who follow me and say those who were given and say to those who were given the scriptures um, and to the unlearned and learned ones have you submitted yourselves yeah and if they submit in islam they are rightly guided but if they turn away then uh, upon you is only the duty of notification and allah is seeing of his servants those who disbelieve in the signs of Allah and kill the prophets without the right uh, and without right and kill those who order justice from among people, give them tidings of painful punishment. May Allah protect us. They are the ones who, whose deeds have become worthless in this world and in the hereafter. And for them, there will be no helpers. Alam tara ila ladina utu nasiba min al kitabi yudauna ila kitabi lahi yuliyah kuma bainahum thuma yeta well thuma yeta wella farikum minhum wahum waribun, thalika bi anahum kalu lanta masan and naru illa yaman majudat, wagarahum fi dini him makanu yefterun, fa kaifa ida jamana hum liyom illa roiba fihi wa ufiat kulu nafsim makasabat wahum la yuflamun, ulilla huma malikal mulki to till mulkam and tasha, utenzi al mulkam in tasha. وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير تولج الليل في النهار وتولج النهار في الليل وتخرج الحي من الميت وتخرج الميت من الحي وترزق من تشاء بغير حساب لا يتخذ المؤمنون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين ومن يفعل ذلك فليس من الله شيء إلا أن تتقوا منهم تقاه ويحذركم الله نفسه وإلى الله المصير قل إن تخفوا ما في صدوركم أو تبدوه يعلمه الله ويعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض والله على كل شيء قدير So do you not consider those who were given a portion of, a portion of the scripture that they, they, were in, they are invited to the scripture of Allah that it should arbitrate, it should judge between them, then a party of them turns away and they are refusing. They That is because they say the fire, ne never will the fire touch us except for a few numbered days. And because they are deluded in their religion by what they were inventing. Uh, so how will it happen when we assemble them for a day about which there is no doubt and each soul will be compensated in, in full for what it earned and they will not be wronged? Uh, say, Allahumma malik al-mulk, say, O oh Allah, the owner of sovereignty, you give sovereignty to whom you will, and you take sovereignty from whom you will, and you honor whom you will, and you humble whom you will, and in your hand is all good, and indeed you are over all things competent. You cause the night to enter the day and you cause the, the day to enter the night and you bring the living out of the dead and you bring the dead out of the living and you give provision to whom you will, uh, you will without account. So let not the believers take disbelievers as allies rather, uh, rather than believers and, if, and whoever of you does that, that has nothing with Allah. Meaning his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has failed, he has finished if you are taking and disbelievers as ally, except when taking precaution against them in prudence, meaning you're being proactive and that is why you've made a deal with them uh, and you're taking this as a precaution and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns you of himself, you underline this please, where you have nafsa. Allah warns you of himself, fear him and be afraid of him and to Allah is the final destination. Say, whether you conceal that which is in your chest or you reveal it, Allah knows it and he knows that which is in the heavens and what is in the earth and Allah is over all things competent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand the deen. يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ تُوَدَّ لَوْ أَنْ أَيْ أَعْبُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ لو أن بينها وبينه أمد بعيدا ويحذركم الله نفسه والله رؤوف رؤوف بالعباد قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم قل أتي الله والرسول فإن تولوا فإن الله لا يحب الكافرين. This is very very important. The day when every soul will find what it has done of good present before it. So whatever you and whatever evil, it has done evil, and then a person will be shown his sin, he will wish that between him and that evil is a great distance. And, you know, you see in dunya as well, when we make mistakes, what do we wish? We wish that, you know, 
this this mistake of ours just vanishes off. So coming back to the translation, so that day every soul will find present in, in, in will find present in front of himself every good that he has done and every evil that he has uh, uh, earned. So Allah again warns you of Himself, and Allah is kind to His servants. Now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Say if you love Allah, then follow Me." Nabi, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being asked to tell us. That if you want Allah to love us, uh, to love, if you want Allah to love us, then what do you do? You follow the Sunnah. You follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Then if you do that, Allah will love you and He will forgive your sins. And Allah is most forgiving and merciful. So by following the Prophet, by obeying Him, by giving importance to His Sunnah, we are going to be loved by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The scholars say that holding on and adhering to the Sunnah is a means of salvation. Okay, uh, I number 32, say, okay, I number 32, say, obey Allah and his messenger, but if they turn away, then indeed Allah does not like the disbelievers. So it's very, very important that holding on to the sunnah, holding on the sunnah is important. In Allah, Astafa Adam wa Nuha wa Ibrahim wa Ala Imran ala al-Alameen, dhuriyatan ba'aduha min ba'ad, wallahu istamiyan alim, id qalat imra'ata Imran rabbi, inni nazartu laka ma fi batuni muharrara, fataqabal minni inna ka anta samiyu al-alim, falamma wada'atha. قالت ربي إني وضعتها أنثى والله أعلم بما وضعت وليس ذكرك الأنثى وإني سميتها مريم وإني أعيذها بك وذريتها من الشيطان الرجيم فتقبلها ربها بقبول حسن وأنبتها نباتا حسنا وكفلها زكريا <تصفيق> كلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا قال يا مريم أنا لك هذا قال قالت هو من عند الله إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب Now starts the story of the family of Imran hence the name of the surah Ali Imran Al means the family the family of Imran Indeed Allah chose Adam and Nuh and the family of Ibrahim and the family of Imran over the world and um, Descendants, descendants, some of them from others, and Allah is hearing and knowing. Mention, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when the wife of Imran said, "My Lord, indeed, I have pledged to you what is in my womb, um, uh, for your service. So accept this from me. Indeed, you are hearing the knowing. So you see, Allah subhanahu wa telling the, the story of a woman again. You see how much Allah subhanahu, you know, the, as much as people say that Islam is an oppressive religion, how Allah subhanahu wa taala has honored the woman, and now is mentioning. We studied about Hajar alayhi salam, Safa al Marwa. Now about the family of uh, Imran and his wife, um, Hanna. Her name was Hanna. Uh, and uh, she is making dua so she is uh, she has conceived a child and she's making dua and look at this how best of a transaction she has made what she is making the best investment by dedicating her child uh, to the service of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so she is making a vow to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that i pledge my whatever is in my womb to your womb to your service but when she delivered her she she said my lord i de delivered a female and allah was most knowing of what she delivered and male is not like the female and i have named her maryam and i seek refuge for you uh, for her in you and for her children from uh, shaitan and the expelled from the mercy from allah so you see what a clever woman she is that immediately she seeks protection Uh, you know, I give my girl in your protection, Ya Rab. You protect her. You keep her safe from Shaitan and from and and her child as well. Subhanallah. So what did Allah uh, say? So her Lord accepted her with good acceptance and caused her to grow in a manner and put her in the care of Zakaria, the Prophet of Allah. Uh, every time Zakaria entered upon her in the chamber, he found her her with provision. Um, so he would find fruits in front of her. He said, "Oh Maryam, from where is this?" Coming to you, he, she said, it is from Allah. Allah provides from who, for whom he wills without any account. At that, Zakaria salam, made the dua. And we're going to come to that. We're going to read the Arabic of that, inshallah. هنالك هنالك دعا زكريا ربه قال ربي هب لي من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء فنادته الملائكة وهو قائم يصلي في المهراب أن الله يبشر 
كبي يحيى مصدقا بكلم بكلمة من الله وسيدا وحصورا ونبيا من الصالحين قال ربي أن يكون لي غلام وقد بلغني الكبر وامرأتي عقر قال كذلك الله يفعل ما يشاء قال رب اجعل لي آية قال آيتك ألا تكلم تكلم الناس ثلاثة أيام إلا رمزا واذكر ربك كثيرا وسبح بالعشي والأب والإبكار وإذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله, إن الله اصطفاك وطهرك واصطفاك على نساء العالمين يا مريم قنتي لربك واسجدي واركعي مع الراكعين ذلك من أنباء الغيب نوحيه إليك وما كنت لديهم إذ يلقون أقلامهم أيهم يكفل مريم وما كنت لديهم إذ يختصمون إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة منه اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم مريم وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين Now Zakaria alayhi salam sees, fruit, sees fruits sent to uh, Maryam alayhi salam and look at her conviction subhanallah she, you know and he asked where did the fruits she said of course it's from Allah Allah provides for whom he wills without any accounts at that moment Zakaria called uh, alayhi, alayhi salam called on his lord because he did not have a child you see he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he feared not for his wealth but if he passes away and he does not have a child who is going to carry on with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he makes dua there and he says oh my lord grant me from yourself a good offspring indeed you are the hearer of the supplication so the angels called him uh, while he was standing in prayer in the chamber indeed Allah gives you good tidings of Yahya confirming a word from Allah who will be honorable abstaining from women meaning he will be very chaste and a prophet from among the righteous he uh, meaning Zakaria salam, said my lord how will how will I have a boy when I have reached an old age and my life and my wife is barren you know, he made a dua, but himself he's surprised. So the angel said, such is Allah. He does whatever he wills. So he said, oh, my Lord, uh, make me a sign. Uh, make for me a sign. He said, your sign is that you will not be able to speak to people for three days except by gesture. And remember your Lord much and exalt him with praise in the morning and the evening. And mention when the, uh, and mention when the angel said, oh, Maryam. Indeed, Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the women of the world. O Maryam, be devoutly obedient to your Lord and prostrate and bow with those who bow in prayer. So Maryam salam, was a chaste woman, was a chosen woman, just like Asiya anha, and Khadija anha, and Fatima anha, and Aisha anha, were the chosen women. And uh, I number 44, and that is from the news of the unseen, which we revealed to you, and you were not with them. This is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When, the, when, when they cast their pens as to which of them should be responsible for Maryam, Maryam. Nor were you when they were disputing. So you see, this is going back to when um, her mother Hannah brought her um, so so that people could, you know, look after her and who would look after her. And then she told, and, and first when they saw it's a it's a girl. None of them want to, wanted to take her in. And then when she, when Hannah told them uh, of the dreams that she had, and they, and they saw the etiquettes of Maryam alayhi salam, then each one of one of them wanted to be, uh, you know, responsible for her. So then they started drawing lots. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling. And then whose name came, comes up in the lot is Zakaria. And Zakaria alayhi salam was her um, you know, Hannah's mother's husband. So her khala's husband is Zakaria. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped and planned for her. And mentioned when angels said, Oh Maryam, indeed Allah gives you good news of a word from him whose name is Isa, the son of Maryam, distinguished in this world and hereafter, and among those who brought uh, who, uh, among those brought near to Allah. Okay, we go on to the next page. Where you call him Nas, you Nas of Il Mahdi, Wakahla, Wamina Solihin, call it Robby, Anna Yakunu Li Waladu, Walam Yam Sesni Bashar, Kada Kola Kadali Kilna, who Yaklukuma Yasha, either Kodo Amra for Inama Yakulu Lahukum Fayakun, where you Ali Muhul Kitab, or Hikmata, or Taurata, or Injil, or Rusulan Ila Bani Israel, in أني قد جئتكم بآية من ربكم أني أخلق لكم من الطين كهيئة الطير فأنفقوا فيه فيكون طيرا بإذن الله وأبرئ الأكمح والأبرص وأهي الموت بإذن الله وأنبئكم بما تأكلون 
وما تدخرون في وما تدخرون في بيوتكم إن في ذلك لا آية لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين ومصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة ولأهل لكم بعض الذي حرم عليكم وجئتكم بآية من ربكم فاتقوا الله وأطيعون إن الله ربي وربكم فعبدوه هذا سيرات مستقيم so he will speak so the angel is saying he will speak to the people in the cradle and in maturity and will be the righteous meaning you are going to have a child and not just a child who will but a child who's going to be righteous because you know this is a desire from for every parent isn't it that you know you wish your child to become righteous so let's let from this let's take a point and make dua for your children may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the children of all the sisters who are attending the class the ones who have children and the ones who will have children the ones the sisters who will listen after may allah grant us all pious children may allah make our children uh, pious and righteous may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they have gone astray ya allah bring them back to the, the the path of islam and allow them to do actions that are pleasing to you ya rabb so I number 47, she said, my Lord, how will I have a child when no man has touched me? Yeah, it, it, and it was said, such is Allah, he creates that he wills. And when he decrees a matter, he only says to it, kun fayakun, be, and it happens. And he will teach them, teach him writing and wisdom and Torah and gospel and, uh, and make him a messenger and send to who? Who is he sent to? To Bani Israel. Uh, to the children of Israel, indeed, I will have, I, I will, I, I have come to you with, and so he comes, he says to them, and he'll grow up, I'll come to you with a sign from your Lord, in that I design for you, and for you from clay, so these are the miracles of uh, Isa alayhi salam, for you from clay, and like, uh, like a form of a bird, and I breathe into it, and it becomes a bird by the permission of Allah, look, he's saying everything is happening with the permission of Allah, and I cure the blind and the leper, and I give life to the dead, all this, again by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, these are the miracles of uh, Isa alayhi salam I inform you of what you eat and what you store in your houses indeed in, in that is a sign for you if you're believers and, it, uh, and I have come to you confirming what was before me of the Torah and to make lawful for you uh, of some uh, of what was forbidden for you and I have come to you with a sign for your Lord so fear Allah and obey me indeed Allah is my Lord and your Lord to so worship him and that is the straight path and when Isa uh, salam, felt persistence in disbelief from the Bani Israel he said um, he said who are my supporters in the cause of Allah the disciples said we are the supporters of Allah and we believed uh, and we have believed in Allah and and we testify that we are Muslims رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا بِمَا أَنزَلْتَ وَاتَّبَعْنَا الرَّسُولَ فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَى إِلَيَّ وَمُطَهِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَجَاعِلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوكَ فَوْقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ ثُمَّ إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَاحْكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ فِيمَا كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ تَخْتَلِفُونَ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَأُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَيُوَفِّيهِمْ أُجُورَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ ذَلِكَ نَتْلُوهُ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ مِنْ الْآيَاتِ وَالذِّكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ إِنَّمَا مَثَلَ عِيسَى عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمَ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَلَا تَكُنْ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ فَمَنْ حَاجَكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْا نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ So he says, they said, رَبَّنَا Amanna, O oh Lord, we have believed in what we we have in what you have revealed, and and we followed the messenger. And which messenger? Isa alayhi salam. So register us among the witnesses to the truth. They planned and Allah planned in response. And Allah is the best of planners. So when Allah said to said, Oh Isa, indeed, I will take you and I'll raise you to myself and I pu and purify you from those who disbelieve and make those uh, uh, who you follow in submission to Allah alone superior to those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. Then to me is your return, and I will judge between you concerning that which which you used to differ. 
And as for those who disbelieved, I will punish them with a severe punishment in this world and the hereafter, and they will have no helpers. But as those, uh, but as for those who believed and did righteous deeds, then he will give them their full reward. And Allah does not like the wrongdoers. And this is and this is what we recite to you of our verses and the precise and the wise message. Indeed, uh, the example of Isa is like that of Adam, because Adam also was made without the father or mother. So why are people so surprised, you know, when they say that Isa alayhi salam is born without a father? Allah created Adam from dust and then he and, and then he said to him, Be, and he was. The truth is from your Lord. Uh, and so do not be among the doubters. So then whoever argues with you about this after the knowledge has come to you, then say, come, let us call our sons and our uh, uh, and your sons and our women and your women, uh, ourselves and yourselves, and then supplicate earnestly and invoke the curse uh, of Allah upon the liars. So what this ayah number 61 is about, this is a delegation from Najran that came to the Prophet ﷺ towards the end of his life. And then the Prophet, you know, uh, he put out the clear teachings of the deen to them. Uh, and um, and they, would, they did not uh, want to believe um, uh, in the teachings um, and they were adamant that Isa was the prophet and the slave of Allah, and, and he would, and they they did not want to believe that they wanted to believe that he was the son of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So then the prophet said, "Okay, then if if I am lying, then this is what we're going to do. We're going to call our children and our sons and our women, and then you call yours, and then let's let let there be a then when we will say that let the curse be of Allah on the ones who are the liars." So when Nabi Sallallahu did that, they really became afraid, and they said, "No, no, no, we're not going to do that." We will go back and we will come back to you with an agreement. فَلِمَ تُحَاجُّونَ فِيمَا لَيْسَ لَكُمْ بِهِ عِلْمٌ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ إِنَّ إن أول الناس لإبراهيم للذين اتبعوه وهذا النبي والذين آمنوا والله ولي المؤمنين ودت طائفة من أهل الكتاب لو يضلونكم وما يضلون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون يا أهل الكتاب لما تكفرون بآيات الله وأنتم, تشهد وأنتم تشهدون Indeed, in the, this is the true narration. There is no deity except Allah, and indeed Allah is exalted in might and wise. But if they turn away, then indeed Allah is knowing of the corruptors. Yeah. So now, now Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is calling the 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 Christians um, to the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Say, O oh Allah, O oh the people of Scripture, come to a word that is equal um, between us and you, that we will not worship except Allah and not associate anything with Him and not take any one other uh, another as lords instead of Allah. But if they turn away, then say, bear witness that we are Muslims. O oh, people of the scripture, why do you agree about, why do you argue about Ibrahim while the Torah and the gospel were not revealed after him? Then will you not reason? Um, because, you know, they would say that we are on the religion of Ibrahim. So here, here you are, those who have argued about that which you have some knowledge, but why do you argue about that which you have no knowledge? And Allah knows while you do not know. Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian. He was an incline, he was one inclining towards the truth, a Muslim surrendering to Allah. He was not of the polytheist, right? Underline this time, my dears, that Ibrahim salam was a Muslim. Indeed, the most worthy, uh, the most worthy of Ibrahim among the people are those who follow him in submission and his prophet. Which prophet? Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And those who believe in his message, uh, and Allah is the ally of the believers. Please underline that that Allah is the wali of the believers. 
a faction of people uh, of the uh, a faction of the people of the scripture wish that they could mislead you and they they do not mislead except themselves and they perceive it not O people of the O people of the scripture why do you believe in the verses of allah while you witness to uh, why do you disbelieve i beg your pardon O people of the scripture why do you disbelieve in the verses of allah while you witness the truth you see in surah baqarah we see bani israel were in, being invited to believe here the Christians are being invited to believe because no person can be rightly guided until he believes in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Quran. Okay, sorry, just we are going to end now. Ya ahl al-kitab lima talbisun al-haqq bil-baqil wa taktumun al-haqq wa antum ta'lamun wa qala al-ta'ifatu min ahl al-kitab aminu bil-ladhi unzila ala al-ladhina amanu wajha al-nahari wa kfuru akhirahu la'allahum yarji'un wa la tu'minu illa liman tabi'a dinakum kul inna al-huda huda Allahi an yu'ta ahadum mithla ma utitum aw yuhajjukum inda rabbikum kul inna al-fadla biyadillahi yu'ti من يشاء والله واسع عليم يقتص برحمته من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم ومن أهل, ومن أهل الكتاب من إن تأمنه بقنطار يؤديه إليك ومنهم من إن تأمنه بدير بدينار لا يؤديه إليك إلا ما دمت عليه قائما ذلك بأنهم قالوا ليس علينا في الأميين سبيل ويقولون على الله الكذب وهم يعلمون بلى من أوفى بعهده واتقى فإن الله يحب المتقين إن الذين يشترون بعهد الله وأيمانهم ثمنا قليلا أولئك لا خلاق لهم في الآخرة ولا يكلمهم الله ولا ينظر إليهم يوم القيامة ولا يزكيهم ولهم عذاب أليم so, O oh people of scripture, why do you confuse the truth with falsehood and conceal the truth while you know it? And the faction of people of scripture to each other, um, they say, believe in what in that believe in that which was revealed to the believers at the beginning of the day and reject at its end perhaps they will abandon their religion and do not trust except those who follow your religion say indeed the true guidance is the guidance of allah do you fear lest someone be given knowledge like you were given or that they they would thereby argue with you before your lord say indeed all bounties in the hands of allah and he grants to whom he wills and allah is all encompassing and wise he selects for his mercy whom he wills. May Allah choose us to be from those who he bestows his mercy. I mean, Allah is the possessor of bounty. So here, make a dua for yourself. Allahumma ni as'aluka min fadlik al-azim. Allahumma ni as'aluka min fadlik al-azim. Allahumma ni as'aluka min fadlik al-azim. Uh, and among uh, I number 75 and among the people of scripture is he who he, if you entrust him with a great amount of wealth he will return you and among them is who he, you entrust uh, entrust with a single silver coin he will not return it to you unless you are constantly standing over him and demanding meaning people are different don't stereotype this is because they say there's no blame upon us concerning the unlearned meaning the non-jewish people they can treat whoever you know other people however they wish and they speak untruth about allah while they know but yes whoever fulfills his commitment and fears allah then indeed allah loves those who fear him indeed those who exchange the covenant of allah and their oaths for a small price will have no share in the hereafter and allah will not speak to them and look at them on the day of resurrection nor will he purify them and they will have a painful punishment وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيقِ يَلْغُونَ أَلْسِنَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابِ لِتَحْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَقُولُونَ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ وَمَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ أَنْ يُؤْتِيَ أَنْ يُؤْتِيَهُ اللَّهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحُكْمَ وَالنُّبُوَّةَ ثُمَّ يَقُولُ يَقُولُ لِلنَّاسِ كُونُوا عِبَادًا لِي مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنْ كُونُوا رَبَّانِيِّينَ بِمَا أَنْتُمْ تُعَلِّمُونَ الْكِتَابَ وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْرُسُونَ وَلَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَتَّخِذُوا الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ أَرْبَابًا أَنْ يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ رسول مصدقا لما معكم لتؤمن النبي ولا تنصرنه قال أقررتم وأخذتم على ذلك إصري قالوا أقررنا قال فاشهدوا وأنا معكم من الشاهدين فمن تولى بعد ذلك فأولئك هم الفاسقون أفغير دين الله يبغون وله أسلم من في السماوات والأرض ضعا وكرها وإليه يرجعون
your, your job. And indeed, there is among them a party who alter the scripture, who change the scripture with their tongues. So you may think it is from the scripture, but it is not from the scripture. And they say this is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. And they speak untruth about Allah while they know. It is not for a human prophet that Allah should give him the scripture and authority and prophethood. And then they would say to people, be my be servants to me rather than Allah. But instead, he would say, be pious, learned men of Lord, because of what you have taught of the scripture and because of what you have studied. Nor could they, nor could he order you to take angels and prophets as Lord. Would he order you to disbelieve after you have been Muslims and recall the people of Scripture when Allah said and took the covenant of the prophets, saying, "I give whatever I give you of the Scripture and wisdom." Then there comes to you a messenger confirming with uh, what is is with you. Then you must believe in him and support him. Allah said, "Have you acknowledged and taken uh, upon my upon that my commitment?" They said, "We have acknowledged it." He he said, then bear witness, I am with you among the witnesses. And whoever turned away after that, they are defiantly disobedient. And so is a, so is is it the other than the religion of Allah that they desire while to him they have submitted to those within um, submitted all those within the heavens and the earth willingly or by compulsion and to him will they be returned. قُلْ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاطِ وَمَا أُوتِيَ مُوسَى وَعِيسَى وَالنَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْهُمْ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ كَيْفَ يَهْدِي اللَّهُ قَوْمًا كَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقٌّ وَجَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتُ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظالمين أولئك جزاؤهم أن عليهم لعنة الله والملائكة والناس أجمعين خالدين فيها لا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينطرون إلا الذين تابوا من بعد ذلك وأصلحوا فإن الله غفور رحيم إن الذين كفروا بعد إيمانهم ثم ازدادوا كفرا لن, ي... لن تقبل توبتهم وأولئك هم الضالون إن الذين كفروا وماتوا وهم كفار فلن يقبل منهم من أحدهم ملء أرضي ذهبا لو لو افتدى به أولئك لهم عذاب أليم أليم وما لهم من ناصرين. And say, O Prophet, uh, we um, say we have believed in Allah in what we had, what was revealed to us, and what was revealed to Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, and the descendants, and it was and what was given to Musa and Isa and to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between them. And whoever desires other than Islam as a religion, never, uh, never, ever will be accepted. It will be accepted from him in the hereafter and will be among the losers. How shall I guide people who disbelieved after, um, after their after their belief and had witnessed that the messenger is true and the clear signs had come to him? And Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Those their recompense will be upon them is a curse of Allah and the angels and the people all together abiding eternally therein the punishment will not be lightened for them and nor will they be reprieved except for those who repent and correct themselves for indeed Allah is forgiving and merciful. He forgives even big mistakes. Mistakes happen but what is the attitude of the believer? Now what are we thinking? You know if we have committed mistakes then we need to uh, turn back to Allah and acknowledge our mistake and turn back to Allah. Ayah number 90, indeed those who reject the message after their, be their belief and then increase in disbelief, never will their claimed acceptance be accepted. And they are the ones who are astray. <clears throat> And I-91, verily those who have disbelieved and died while they were disbelievers, the whole earth um, full of gold will not be accepted from any one of them, uh, even if they offered it as a ransom. For them is a painful uh, torment and they will have no helpers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us uh, to be of those people who are repentant. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawab rahim. Okay, three, four minutes. Would you like to say something? What have you learned?
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our mistakes. I'll read the dua. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika shadu la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka, astaghfiruka, astaghfiruka to Bulaik. All those who want to leave can leave. I'm just going to go through quickly. What have you learned? What are the, what, yeah, to do charity. There was importance of charity. And firstly, idol kursi, what have you learned? Knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The theme of this juice is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You all are going to start planning about, uh, you know, setting up a sadaqai jariya for yourselves. Okay. And then interest, you're going to, um, you, you're going to try, if you are involved in any sort of interest, you're going to give up that. Okay. And as a mother, what have you learned? As a mother, what have you learned? What uh, what are the lessons that you've learned as a mother? Hmm? Giving charity to purify your sins, yes. Okay, what time is the best time to do make dua for your children? What is the best time to do istighfar? Best time to do istighfar? Good. Barakallahu feekum. Before Fajr. Yeah? Alhamdulillah. And uh, and the fact that you are sitting in this class and attending, what should you be doing now? You, you are either serving the deen of Allah or helping the people who are serving the deen of Allah. So uh, this is a great blessing. So what should you be doing? We should be grateful. Yeah, we should be grateful uh, of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of uh, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullahu khairan, my dears. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this knowledge uh, for it to internalize and may Allah accept it from you. Yes, I will, inshallah, um, I will send, I'll ask the admins to send you the, the link for the, the this Quran. Okay, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khairan. Inshallah, I shall see you all tomorrow uh, with next year's. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.